So you're thinking about doing some home recording. Or maybe you tried some home recording but just can't get the sound you're looking for. Or worse, maybe you tried recording on your computer in the past but you damaged your sound devices. With the Scarlett 2i2 Studio 3rd Gen and Ableton Live, you can be recording studio quality audio in just a few simple steps. The Scarlett 2i2 Studio 3rd Generation is an audio interface kit. For just a few hundred dollars on Amazon or other places online, you can get yourself the audio interface, condenser mic and the headphones you see here. Let's get set up. The first step is to connect your mic, headphones and any instruments that you are using to your Scarlett. There are two inputs available. For this video, I'm just using one, which is the microphone. But if you wanted to record your vocals and guitar playing, for example, you would be using both inputs. Before connecting the Scarlett to your computer, you will need to download and install Focusrite Control. You can get this from the Focusrite page. You'll also need some music making software on your computer. This is your digital audio workstation, or a door. In our case, we're using Ableton Live 11. They have a free trial, so you can try before you buy, and it's really easy to use. Okay, we're now ready to connect the Scarlett to our computer via USB. Once the audio interface powers up, I will press the 48 volt button, which supplies phantom power to my condenser mic. Okay, let's move to the computer and we'll open Ableton Live. When you open Ableton for the first time, you're going to see this template here, which is called the Session View. My preference is to work in Arrangement View. You can easily flick between modes by clicking this button in the top right corner here. Vertical lines mean Session View. Horizontal lines mean Arrangement View, which is where we'll be working. Ableton New Project default is to provide four different tracks, two of which we don't need today, because we're only recording vocals and backing track audio. So I'm going to delete these first two tracks. I can click on this one, being a MIDI, and hit the delete button. And then I can do the same for the other MIDI. And I'm just going to rename this track because I like to keep everything organized. And we obviously want to know what we're tracking. Especially as you track more vocals, things tend to get lost in audio 1, audio 2, audio 3. So it's good to be as neat as possible from the beginning. The next thing we want to look at is options. You'll want to go to preferences, so that you can make sure that your audio devices are set to where they need to be. Your audio device should be set to whatever audio interface you're using. In this case I'm using the Focusrite, so that should be my audio device. Your buffer size is definitely something worth considering. I'm just going to leave my buffer size at 256 because that's what my computer is optimised for. But if you want to hear the least amount of latency, meaning no delay between your vocals going into your microphone and then into your interface and then into your ears, you're going to want to use the smallest number possible. However, if you have a smaller buffer size, it's going to affect your CPU. So if your computer can't handle a high amount of processing, you're going to want to stay in the higher numbers with the buffer. Once you have that sorted, it's now time to check that you can hear yourself. And you can do this by going back to the track and arming it. Right now it's set to off, but just to the left here is auto. We'll be selecting that option. I can now hear myself while being tracked. Okay, lastly we want to make sure our gain staging is properly set up. Mostly we want to make sure that we're not going to peak or clip the vocals. So providing your gain is set correctly, you're going to want to arm the track next. You're going to want to hit this little button right here. And you can see that this is monitoring now, picking up my vocals. And how you know it's too loud is you're going to want to really test your vocals out. So you want to sing as loud as you think you're going to sing at the time you're recording. And you're going to want to see if it goes in the red. See how it doesn't really go in the red? It's just sort of bouncing around in the nice green area. All right, I'm going to turn my gain up on the interface and I'm going to test my vocals now and you'll see there it's gone into the red, which is not very nice. So it was clipping and 
just remember that you can't fix this after you record there's no amount of turning the volume down that will get that out of the track so you really want to make sure you get the gain level right before you record okay so we're all ready to record you can simply hit this big round button here but let's say you want to record with a backing track or an instrumental track you can simply drag and drop the file into the project like this now you can keep the track you dropped like this and then use your original track for arming and recording your vocals just like this And so the last thing you want to probably do is share your project. Super easy as well. You just click file and then export the audio video. You can check your file output settings here and then you just hit export. It'll take a second to render the audio and that's really it. That's Ableton Easy Vocal Recording with Scarlett 2i2 Studio. It's really that easy. If you have any questions or comments, please add them down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.